Authorizations and login are really just the last thing you want to think about when you're building out your application. You just want to get it done and get it out of the way, have people be able to log in and then get into the core of your application and the unique value that it provides. So I'm going to show you how to use the Next Auth library with your Next.js app router application and get authentication and login all set up and ready to go in just a few minutes. It's going to be great. I'm going to show you how to do the initial setup. I'm going to show you how to do protected routes. I'm going to show you how to do the server actions, which are new to app router. Make sure that you get the user ID in that. We're going to do user ID inside API routes. We are going to get uh, those API routes from the client. We're going to get API routes from the server. I'm going to show you basically everything that I could think of when it comes to next off to make sure that you have every scenario covered. And of course, all the code is going to be available to you for free in GitHub in a link right down below. But before we get into it, I am doing a full course on Next.js app writer called Pro Next.js. Go to pronextjs.dev for more information to sign up for a mailing list. You get tips and tricks and articles all for free before we even launch the course. And I'm so excited to say that we will be launching in just a few weeks a full tutorial on how to do client state management that includes Redux, Jotai, Zustand, all of it. It's really great in the app router. We've done weeks of research on this to make sure that it is rock solid and ready for you to take to production. But in the meantime, of course, let's talk about Next Auth and Next.js. Let's get right into it. Obviously, the first thing we need is an Next.js application to work on. Let's go create that right now. We'll call this app router auth using next auth. We'll use the source directory and, of course, the app router. And we'll bring it up in VS Code. So right away, I'm going to add the next auth library. So what is next auth? Now, next auth is just a library. It doesn't actually have its own authentication service. There are a bunch of authorization providers that you can connect to using NextAuth. Let's go take a look at those. If we go into the providers section, you can see all of the different providers that you can use. You can use one or more of these providers in your application. That means right out of the box with just a few credentials that you create on your side, you can connect to GitHub, Google, Twitter, whatever you want in terms of authentication, you can do it right through here. And then you get, as a developer, you just get the user ID and the avatar and the name, and you're good to go, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So what we're going to do is we are going to use this with GitHub in this example. Now, the next thing we want to do is create a .env file in our project. That's where we're going to have the environment variables that we are going to then send to our code that we have embedded in our app that connects to NextAuth. We want to use environment variables for that because we want to have two different sets of environment variables, one for local and one for production. All right, let's get into it. So I'll create that .env file. And in there, we're going to have three pieces of information. We're going to have the next auth URL. That's the base URL for application. Obviously, that's going to be different in production than it is in our local environment. In this case, it's on localhost. We're going to have a next auth secret. That's just a secret that we need to come up with randomly. So to do that, we use OpenSSL. So over here in the terminal, I'll use random from OpenSSL. It'll just create this kind of random code, and I'll just drop that in there. You can actually use any method you want. This is kind of the one that folks tend to use. And then we need our GitHub ID and our GitHub secret. So we need to go over to GitHub and create an OAuth application that'll give us those values. So I'm over here on GitHub. I'm going to go to my settings. And once I'm there, I'll go over to developer settings, then into OAuth apps, and I'll register a new application. We'll call this app writer using next auth. For the homepage URL, I'll just use localhost. Easy enough. And then for the callback URL, I'll use API, auth, and then callback and GitHub. So that's actually going to be an endpoint that we're going to create in our application. We'll create that really soon. The interesting thing about GitHub in this case is that you're going to want to actually create two different OAuth applications, one for development and one for production, because you can only have one authorization callback URL per OAuth application, but that's just on GitHub. Different vendors do it different ways. So let's go and register application. So now we have our client ID. By the way, if you see any credentials here, by the time you see this video, they will be invalid anyway. But hey, if you want to put into the comments that I leaked credentials, go for it. It just helps the engagement. 
All right, let's go and take that client ID, drop it in here as our GitHub ID, and we'll want to create our client secret by generating a new client secret. Once it's generated that, you copy it, paste that in there for the GitHub secret, and we're good to go. Now let's go create that API route handler. So we'll go and create a new file. We'll call it API auth. And then within that, we'll put some brackets. And what we want is everything after API auth is going to be assigned to next auth. So we'll do dot, 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 next auth. And then after that, route.ts. So that's created that file as well as that directory structure. And into there, we're going to bring in next auth. We'll also bring in the GitHub provider. And then we'll create the options that we're going to send to next auth to initialize it. Now, in this case, we're just going to specify that we have a GitHub provider and we're going to give it the client ID and the secret. There's a lot of other options you can put on here, but this is just what you need to get going. Next, we'll create a handler using next auth. That's going to handle any Git or post requests. So we'll then export that handler as both Git and post. Let's hit save and try it out. So we'll start it up with pmpm dev. Then we'll go over in the browser and we'll go to our homepage and we see that we have our basic app going. No problem. We haven't made any changes there. So that's what we expect. Now let's go to API auth and then providers. And we can see that we have our list of providers, just GitHub in this case, all set up and good to go. So what we can do now is we can do sign in. Holy moly. Look at that. Now we can sign in with GitHub. We say we want to authorize. And now we're being redirected back. Of course, are we authorized? Yes, we are. But we don't know yet because we actually haven't used that session. So the next thing to do is to go and create a session and a session provider that we can use to see if we are logged in. But yes, we are logged in. So good so far. So the next thing we're going to do is create a session provider that's going to share the session state as context throughout the application. So I'm going to go create a new directory called components. And within that session provider, and of course, this is going to be a client component because it uses context. Now, the really cool thing about next auth is that, of course, it already has a provider. It's just not marked as a client component. So let's bring it in and then just re-export it as the session provider. We're just going and adding on use clients. We're telling next that this is a client component, even though we know it is because it's using context. OK, let's go bring that over into our layout. And the next thing we want to do is bring in get server session from next off. That is the server side session fetcher. So we'll now go and invoke that in our layout. So we need to await get server session because it's a promise. So we'll need this to be an async function. But otherwise, we're good to go. Now we need to use that session provider and wrap our children in it. So now our session is available to any client component through that session provider context. Now just clean this up a little bit more. I'm going to go and wrap our children in a main with a little tailwind on it. Now I do want to have it so that we have like a nav menu on the left hand side and we have some content on the right hand side because we're going to have a few different routes here that we're going to play with. So let's go build that nav menu. So we'll create a nav menu component and I'll make it a client component and we'll bring in link because we're going to be using a bunch of links, navigate around because of nav menu. And they're also going to bring in sign in, sign out. That's going to give us the URLs for sign in and sign out as well as use session, which is what we're going to use anytime we're in a client component to get the current session from that session provider. All right, so at the top of this nav menu, let's create a auth button. And this is going to use use session to go and get the session. And if we have a session, then we will say that who we are, we'll give it the username, and we'll say that you have an option to sign out if you're signed in. Or we say that we're not signed in, and then we have a button that says sign in. And finally, we will create our nav menu by just having a div with that auth button in it. Obviously, we're going to add more links as we go. Let's hit save. And let's bring that into our layout. We import it. And then we use it down in the main. All right. So let's go take a look over in page. And there's a whole, whole bunch of stuff in here that we can get rid of. Woof. Seems to get bigger every time I look at it. And for the moment, let's just put in home. All right. Let's hit save. Now let's have a look. All right, looks good. I did change it to a dark color scheme so it wouldn't blow out your eyes. But there you go. So now I am logged in. I am logged in as Jack Harrington. And I've got our home over here. So yeah, when we did the API auth sign-in, everything worked. Awesome. So let's sign out and then sign in again and see that whole flow. 
and there we go. How easy is that? It is insanely easy. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is figure out how to use the session in an RSC. We actually already know, but let's use this homepage as our test page for an RSC get of the session. So to get the server session in a React Server component or RSC, you're just gonna bring in get server session from next auth. And then just like we did before, we're gonna call await on get server session. So let's make this an async function and then we'll get the server session. Now let's just format it up a little bit. Say we get the server session result and then we give the name. Otherwise we save it we're not logged in. Let's try it again. And there we go. So we get this get server session result is Jack Harrington. I can sign out and now we're not logged in. I can sign in again. And there we go, Jack Harrington. Cool. Now, most likely the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create protected routes in your application. Those are routes that you can only use if you're logged in. Otherwise we send you to the login page, easy enough. So let's go build a, out a protected route. So I'll create a new file in here called protected and then create the page.tsx file inside of that. Now bring in our friend get server session from next auth. And we'll create our protected route functional component and call get server session. And then we just look to see if we have a session or not. Well, if we don't have a session, then what do we do? Well, we used redirect. And we'll just redirect the person to the sign-in page, just like we did before. But if they do have a session, we just say that they are on a protected route. That's awesome. Okay, so let's go over and try this out. We'll go to slash protected. And it looked at my session, saw that I had one, and then everything is cool. But let's try it again. Let's do sign out. Now that we're logged out, let's try it again. And we automatically get redirected to the sign-in page. So easy. Now we're gonna have a couple of these different examples. So let's go and add on these routes to our nav menu. And go back up to the top here and we'll begin use path name so we know what path we're on. We'll create some tailwind styling for active and inactive routes. Then down in here, we'll get our path name. And then I'll just add a big old unordered list with a bunch of our links. So it'll just look to each one and says, is that the current path? If it is, it's the active route, otherwise not. Let's hit save and take a look. And now I've got our different things over here. We're in the protected route currently. Looks good. Go back to home. Awesome. Okay, cool. So obviously the next thing we want to take a look at is server actions. According to our nav menu, let's go build out a server action example to see how you get the current session inside of a server action. So the first thing we're going to do is enable server sessions on our server. So let's go to, down here to our next config, go into next config, go into experimental and say that we want server actions to be enabled. Let's hit save, rerun. Okay, so let's create that server action route with our page in it and it'll bring in get server session and create our server action page. Now we're gonna create a server action. So that is a function that the server is going to expose to clients. So let's create one called who am I? So this async function is a server action because we use use server in there and it's just gonna get the session and then it's gonna return the name. If there's no name, then we say that we're not logged in. Now we need to have a way to call that from the client. So we need to have a client component that takes that server action and then actually calls it. So let's call that the who am I button. So we'll create a new component in here called who am I button. That who am I button is gonna take a who am I action, that who am I action that we just created. That is a function that returns a promise to a string. We're then gonna take that string value that we get back and store it in name once we click on the button. Easy enough, let's hit save, go to our page, bring in our who am I button. And then we'll just invoke that with the server action that we just created. Let's hit save, try it again, we'll go over to server action and it'll say, I'm Jack Harrington, how cool is that? If I sign out, and then try it again, who am I? I'm not logged in, how cool. All right, let's sign in, sign in again, awesome. All right, next thing we wanna know is how to do protected API routes. So to do that, let's go and see how we do the server session in an API route. So over in our API directory, we'll create a new file called who am I, and that's gonna be a route handler, so we'll use route.ts. Now here, we're just going to respond to a get request. You're gonna do API who am I, and we're gonna get back the name as a JSON object, and that's gonna have our current name in it. All we're gonna do is just respond to get, we'll get our server session, and we will just use next response JSON to return it. It's that easy. If you wanna go and send back an unauthorized error message or whatever, of course, that's completely up to you. In this case, I just wanna know if I'm logged in or not. Now let's try this first on the client. 
by creating a new route called API from client. And we'll make it a page, of course. Now this page is going to have a piece of state called name. And then it's going to use a use effect that only launches on that initial load because it's an empty dependency array, then calls fetch on that API route that we just created, and then puts the result down in the TSX. Let's hit save and try again. So we'll go to API from client. And there you go. Name Jack Harrington. Again, sign out. Not logged in. Sign in again. And there you go. Perfect. Now, finally, because I know somebody's going to ask for it, I'll give you a way to do that exact same request, but from an RSC. So we'll create another route called API from server. Then we'll make the call back to ourselves by calling localhost 3000. Of course, it has to be an absolute URL because you're not calling this off the client. And then we'll get the JSON from that. Let's format up that result and give it a try. All right, we'll go from the server. And now we are logged in, but it's saying that we are logged out. So why is that? Well, what's happening is we are getting an authenticated request for the route API from server, but then that on the server, that route handler is making a request back to itself, but it doesn't actually have any of the headers that we had from before with the authentication. So how do we get that? Well, we can now go get, get the headers from next headers, and then we pass those headers on as part of the fetch. Let's hit save, try it again, and it looks good. Awesome. All right, well, hopefully that covers every single possible scenario that at least I can think of when it comes to basic authentication in a Next.js app writer application. If there are more ideas that you have, please put those in the comment section right down below. In the meantime, go check out that pronextjs.dev, sign up on that mailing list, and you'll get access to those tips and tricks and that really cool client state management tutorial that I'm putting together right after this video right now. I'm so excited. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps with the algorithm. And also hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new one of these blue collar coders comes out.